My gang is sexy. Welcome back to Pleasant Hill, the Battle of Pleasant Hill, the Red River Campaign, the great battles of the American Civil War system back in the olden times, in the 80s. Um, Richard Berg, all those good, wonderful things. Great game. Okay, so a lot of good, good comments on the on the last video and uh, the pre-video, the setup and everything. A lot of good uh information about the battle I, seriously something i just don't know anything about it i never studied those things i'm you know obviously i'm an eastern theater guy and in the west pretty much shiloh is the only thing i know anything about uh, a little bit about vicksburg that's about it so so this has been fun so far we've gotten through four turns um the numbers which you know you uh, there's not as many units in this thing as there are in a course like a like terrible swift sword or the other other bigger games like that so but it appears to me that the union can take a bigger beating than the confederates can in most cases um nothing heavy yet uh ammo being spent by artillery rounds is more than the casualties have been so a lot of pins a lot of routes happen in this game the morales it's interesting too because most games you know i play in the eastern theater the confederate morale is much stronger than the Union morale. This game here seems to be a little, a little flipped, and the strength of the units seems to be uh, a lot more in the favor of the Union. However, with that being said, the quick pressure and consistent pressure of the Confederates, um, I would say at the moment is creating success for them. They have not attained any victory point hexes yet, other than the one they start that they own at start, which is way down here. So, but they're, they're pushing, they're close. They're within four and four hexes and two hexes of two other ones. Okay. So it opened up with, um, Churchill smacking into the, the, I guess this is going to be the Southwest corner of Pleasant Hill, uh, Western corner of Pleasant Hill. And he drove the union troops out of the, the gully right here. And he's up on the slope, but these guys have recovered. Not only have they recovered, this brigade here, uh, McMillan, he got activated because the Confederates got too close. And Shaw, Shaw's troops got chased away, but they've they've sort of recovered too and bounced back up in here. But they lost the crew with this gun, so that gun's been abandoned. And the Confederates, you know, they'll they'll move first on this next turn, so they'll they'll overtake that gun. But then um, Dwight's brigade over here, which is a large brigade, they activated and just punished the Confederate left over there, which is where uh major's independent brigade is right not they might have three regiments in that brigade i think see one two yeah they got three regiments in that brigade so that well i wasn't expecting much they were just over there i should, probably shouldn't even have brought them into the fight i should have just sort of left them over here as security over here on the confederate right um bagby's brigade they keep going back and forth over here with lynch uh lynch is the much stronger force so he's pretty much winning that fight now, the way it looks, there's a mass of Confederates in here, but most of these units are four strength and down. Matter of fact, most of them are probably three strength units and down, 300 men and down. And these Union brigades sitting back here eventually are going to get going. So the Confederates really, really, really need to wreck this left side over here. I, I might have taken a different approach to this and not been so aggressive right off the... I, I don't know yet. I, I need to see what happens over the next couple of turns, but... If this doesn't go the way my intention was with the Confederates, and it does go the way of my defensive intention for the Union, I may have want to flip this strategy the next time I would play this game and see if I couldn't focus down that left side first. Because while they had two brigades sitting here and one waiting to be activated here, the threat of all of this was not there. So now starting with turn three, the Union starts getting a, a table where they roll for activation of units. Um, if the Confederates, like I say, if they get within three hexes of a brigade that's not activated, that brigade activates. And then of course you have four, five, and four, five, and six hexes if you get within that way. They get a they get a marker put on the brigade, and then you roll each turn to see if they're going to activate because of that marker. Uh, which I did have one brigade activate, but I've had one see sitting right here has an activation of five. So he has to roll a five or better to activate. Unless, of course, he pops up on the table over there and activates. 
So right now, the uh, casualty numbers, it looks like the Confederates have taken about uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 1,100 casualties, with 100 of those being captured. And the Union has taken 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1,100, 1,100 with 200 uh, ca are captured, and they've lost a couple of guns. So I don't think the Confederates can trade punches. I don't think the Confederates were ever able to trade punches in any battle during the American Civil War. So... But if they can, if they're trading punches and they can take these objectives, that's fine. But they they go brigade combat ineffective faster or with le with lesser losses per brigade than the Union Army does over here. Um, so yeah, so we're moving right along. Gameplay is really really easy. If you got one of these old things like that, like Stonewall is a great one to start with. If you got that, dig it out and play it. You could you could probably play Stonewall in one sitting. All right. This one here you probably could too if you just sat here and did it. Because I know when I play, I played two turns today, maybe an hour. Uh, and that's that's with me bouncing back and forth from the kitchen, walking outside, seeing what the weather's doing, that kind of stuff. So, all right, so Pleasant Hill, the Confederates are still on the, on the, on the push right now. Union Brigades are starting to activate. They just picked up two new activations on this last turn. And if the Confederates push any farther, they're going to pick up another one. Um, rolling on the activation table, I rolled the two turns that uh, the Union rolled on turn three and four. The activation was for Benedict's Brigade, who was already activated, so no game there. All right, let's get this thing posted so y'all can see what's going on with Pleasant Hill. American Civil War, 1864, the Red River Campaign. Great Battles of American Civil War, Richard Berg. We'll talk to y'all soon.